I'm Dr. Tom Dieters, editor-at-large for Muscle & Fitness Magazine. I am thrilled and honored to welcome you to the Muscle & Fitness Training System. This series, developed by the world's leading cutting-edge sports medicine and bodybuilding experts, is devoted to showing you how to carve out exactly the physique you've always wanted, whether it's a strong, chiseled, lean body or the massive muscle of a champion bodybuilder. We're talking rock-hard abs, massive arms, a thick chest, and mighty back and powerful legs. All of these are now within your reach because with this series you'll learn the exercises and the programs to achieve the physique you desire. During this program, we're going to concentrate on showing you how to build the arms you've always dreamed of. If you want tight, muscular arms that say, here's someone who's strong and stays fit, then pay close attention to the lean muscle building exercises. If you want massive guns, and I'm talking about world-class artillery to drop jaws and stop conversation, then follow the mass building exercises. You don't get an opportunity like this every day because we've assembled the world's best arms to demonstrate how to perform each exercise for best results. These world champion athletes are here to inspire you and coach you to train with maximum intensity. Everybody admires well-sculpted, bulging arms. The first muscle people notice is usually the biceps or biceps brachii. The muscle has a plural name because it consists of two heads which overlap one starting under the deltoid up in the shoulder area and the other on the upper arm and both attach just below the elbow. The purpose of the biceps is to flex and curl the arm as well as to supinate and turn up the palm. The basic bicep exercise is the curl. The triceps or triceps brachii are actually a three-headed muscle, thus the tri and triceps, which originate under the deltoid and upper arm and attach below the elbow and therefore extend or straighten the arm. The basic tricep exercise, therefore, involve resistance against straightening the arm from the bent position. The forearm muscles are called the flexors and extensors, running on the back, the extensors, and the front, the flexors, of the lower arm. These muscles control the action of the hand and wrist. The job of the forearm flexor muscles is to curl the hand up and forward. The forearm extensor muscles bring the hand back up toward the wrist. As the first step to any workout, spend about five minutes warming up your body. That means literally getting the blood flowing, raising the heartbeat, core temperature, and metabolic rate with a few minutes of aerobic exercise. Stationary bike, treadmill, jump rope, whichever you prefer and whatever gets your motor running. Get into a groove. Don't waste a moment. Don't just look around. For these five minutes, start visualizing what you want to accomplish in your workout. See your goals and see yourself charging toward them. Think like a pro, grow like a pro. Here's how we break down the arm exercises for you in this program. The first two sections focus on your biceps and the second two sections on your triceps. Each of these is split into two separate workout routines. For both biceps and triceps, the goal of the first routine is to build mass, and the goal of the second is to sculpt and define. Let's start by learning how to really pack meat onto your biceps. We're going to begin with the standing barbell curl and pyramid the weight up for each of five sets. As you raise the weight with each set, you're going to reduce your reps from 10 to 10 to 8 to 6 and 6 again. The second exercise, the easy preacher curl, we're pyramid down with each of three sets. Here you'll start heavy and increase your reps from six to eight to 10. Then we'll move into the dumbbell concentration curl. Two sets of 12 reps each with enough weight to give you serious resistance, but not enough to throw off your tightly focused form. And we'll finish this routine with a dumbbell hammer curl, doing three sets of 10, 10, then eight, making sure you use a challenging weight. 
This exercise is the granddaddy and one of the best of all biceps exercises, the standing barbell curl. Start by standing with your feet parallel and shoulder width apart, toes pointing slightly out. Grasp the barbell at about shoulder width with a palms up grip and with extended relaxed arms, hold the bar in front of your thighs. Now, before we get going, a couple of essential tips. One, keep your body erect. If you round your shoulders or pull them back as you lift, you'll reduce tension on the biceps, weakening the effectiveness of the exercise. Two, don't start too heavy. Use a weight that allows you to do the exercise with strict form for best results. If the bar is too heavy, you won't be getting the full effect you want. You'll be cheating by throwing your hips or using your shoulders. Okay. As you begin your lift, inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you curl the barbell by flexing your elbows. See how he keeps his elbows in place at his side? Don't let them move forward. It weakens the tension on your biceps and reduces the effectiveness of the curl. Keeping your hands in line with your forearms, curl up at a moderate speed, pausing at the peak of the movement here. Now exhale at the top, then slowly lower the bar under control back to the start position stopping just short of full extension and immediately begin your lift again with an inhale. That's it. Repeat for reps, keeping your back straight, your elbows in, and you're on your way to building and carving great biceps. The preacher curl, done with proper technique, focuses tension into your biceps by limiting the involvement of the back and shoulders, making this a super intense exercise. Place the backs of your upper arms against the inclined support pad, adjusting the pad height so you're sitting in a fairly erect, stable position. Hold the easy bar or dumbbell with a palms up grip, bending your elbow right from the start. Here's a performance tip. The top of the pad should go all the way up into your armpit to really stabilize the shoulder joint. Now, inhale slightly more than usual, and as you hold your breath, slowly flex your elbows to curl the weight up exhaling as you reach the top of the movement, which should be with your forearms vertical or slightly beyond. Now return to the start position, under control, stopping before your arms lock straight out. And you heavy lifters, this last caution is especially for you. For those of you who want to intensify the muscle contraction, here's an alternative. When you get fatigued, only go down to about a 90 degree angle in your elbows, then go back up and peak at the top. Perfect. Now finish it out with the maximum contraction of the muscles, pause, and lower back down to the starting position. The concentration curl is a fantastic exercise for increasing biceps and brachialis mass, making it a powerful overall upper arm builder. It's called a concentration curl precisely because it concentrates so much tension in your arm and it requires your full attention to get the most out of the exercise. Sit at the edge of your exercise bench with your legs apart and your feet flat on the floor. Let's start by working the right arm. Lean forward and place your left elbow or hand on your left hip or thigh for support. Place your right triceps on the inside of your right thigh. A key performance tip Keep your triceps pressed against your thigh at all times during the exercise. Now, holding the dumbbell in your right hand with an overhand grip and with your elbow slightly bent, inhale fairly deeply and hold the breath as you curl the weight up so that it comes close to touching your chest. As you reach the top point, pause, exhale, and return to the starting position under control. To vary your workout and work the biceps a little harder, Turn the dumbbell up or supinate slightly as you curl toward the top of the movement, then return back to a straight wrist or neutral position as you lower down to the starting point. With the hammer curl, you're not using a palms up or palms down grip, but a neutral grip, just like a hammer which really targets the brachialis and brachioradialis shown here. Again, like in all the standing curls, keep your elbows locked in at your side throughout the full range of motion. 
Try not to lean back as you lift or push your hips forward when you start the motion. If you find yourself doing that, you're probably using a bit too much weight. So ease back on the weight until you can do the movement with strict control. Okay, let's get started. Stand upright, holding a dumbbell in each hand at your sides. Inhale and hold your breath as you contract your biceps to raise the dumbbells toward your shoulder. Curl up slowly, pause, then exhale as you lower the weight to a near straight arm position. Pause a second and repeat with the other arm. Remember, don't turn your wrists at all during execution. Keep them firm at all times, or you'll lose the concentration and the tension in your brachioradialis. If you want to get a bit more tension at the top of the contraction, hold for one to two seconds and really squeeze before returning to the start of the position. Now, with the following four exercises, we're going to focus on adding definition to your biceps. We'll start with the standing easy bar curl, four sets, pyramiding up with each set. 12, 12, then 10, then 8. Then we're going to do the seated dumbbell alternating curl, beginning with a heavy weight for two sets, then lightening up for the third. 8 to 10 reps for the first two sets, then 12 for the final set. The third exercise we're about to demonstrate is the two-arm high cable curl. Two sets of 15 at decent resistance, and finally, the dumbbell unilateral preacher curl, two sets of 15 with moderately heavy weight. This is the last of the exercises of this routine, so take it to failure. And now we're ready to move on to, you guessed it, the standing easy barbell curl. Adding the easy bar to the standard barbell curl gives you a little more extension in your arms, which is useful for adding definition. Basically, you're going to do the same motion as a standing barbell curl. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart, toes pointing slightly out. Grasp the bar about shoulder width with a palms up grip and with extended, relaxed arms, hold the bar in front of your thighs. Keeping your body erect, inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you curl the easy bar by flexing your elbows. Don't let your elbows move forward. That reduces the tension in your biceps as well as the effectiveness of the curl. Keeping your hands in line with your forearms, curl up at a moderate speed. Exhale at the top, then slowly lower the bar under control back to the starting position, stopping just short of full extension and immediately begin your lift again. By sitting, the dumbbell curl eliminates the urge to throw your hips into the lift so that you can get more concentration on the biceps and other forearm muscles. As always, strict form means greater effectiveness. That means no swinging, no jerking, no momentum. Just smooth, controlled, focused movements. Let's have a look. To start, straddle the end of the bench. Contract your lower back to hold yourself erect with normal spinal curvature. Hold a dumbbell in each hand with a neutral grip, palms facing your sides. Inhale slightly more than usual to stabilize your torso and hold the breath as you raise the dumbbells by slowly bending your elbows. After the dumbbells pass your thighs, supinate or turn your wrists up so that your palms face up at the top of the movement. Pause briefly at the top, then exhale as you lower the dumbbells under control, pronating or turning your palms down until your arms are fully extended and your palms are facing each other. I'm sure you've noticed by now that one of the key messages of this training series is that strict control during lifting maximizes effectiveness as well as reduces the chances of injury. With the two-arm high cable curl, you especially want to do two things. First, keep your upper arms as motionless as possible with movement only occurring at the elbow. Second, you want to keep your wrists firm and unflexed to prevent injury. Make sure your body is centered between the pulleys and that you are balanced. If you can, adjust the pulley height so the handles start at about 12 to 15 inches above shoulder level. Now grasp the handles with a palms up grip and stand or sit midway between the stacks. If you're sitting, be sure to keep your feet planted firmly on the ground and your body weight planted in your hips. Take your starting position. See how his arms are slightly flexed out to his sides? 
They can be positioned level with the ground or just above. Now inhale and hold your breath as you bend your elbows, pulling the handles toward your head until your forearms are well past the vertical position. Pull as tight as you can, then hold and squeeze for two seconds. Then exhale and return with strict control back to the start position. Pause momentarily here, keeping the muscle tense, then repeat for reps. You know, this exercise has tons of benefits for bodybuilders and powerlifters, but it's also crucial in any kind of athletics that involve pulling or flexion at the elbow, such as climbing, pull-ups, gymnastics, basketball, tennis, martial arts, you name it across the board. Just make sure you get the biomechanics right. You can really make your biceps scream with one arm dumbbell preacher curls, but you can also curl both arms simultaneously to save time. Either way, this is a fantastic exercise to isolate your biceps. Start by sitting on your preacher curl bench and lean slightly forward from your hips. Place your arms over the arm support pad and grasp one or two dumbbells with a palms up grip, keeping your wrists straight in line with your arm. Remember, you want maximum extension in your arms, but you don't want to hyperextend. So keep your elbows just slightly bent and the weight under slow control when you reach the bottom of the movement. To begin, inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you smoothly curl the dumbbells as high as possible without ever losing arm contact with the support pad. As you reach the top of your lift, exhale and hold the peak contraction and really squeeze for a second before lowering the dumbbells under control. As you reach the bottom, pause briefly without letting the tension off your biceps or allowing your elbows to hyperextend and then start the next rep. Okay, now that we've reviewed how to build massive biceps to burst the sleeves of your t-shirt, let's look at balancing out that with massive triceps. We're going to start with the close grip bench press. Paramating up the weight with each of five sets, 10 reps, 10 reps, then eight, then six, then six. Hey, you want mass, right? All right, then the next exercise is the bench dip, where we'll do three sets of perfectly executed reps, 10 each. Then we'll demonstrate the seated easy bar French press. Three sets, paramating down each set with six reps at first, then eight, then 10. Push yourself. Start heavy whenever you pyramid down, as you will with the fourth exercise, the rope press down, where we'll do three sets at eight reps, then 10, then 10 reps again, or until failure. The close grip bench press is an excellent mass building compound exercise for the beginning of your triceps workout. Move through these reps when you're fresh and you can handle a little bit more weight before your triceps are fatigued with isolation exercises. The key here is to slide your hands inward a bit and grip the bar with your hands narrower than shoulder width apart. Find a comfortable spot where you can balance the bar with certainty and not overcompensate with the rest of your body. Begin by lying on your bench press station with your head, shoulders, and glutes resting on the bench and a slight arch in your lumbar spine. The barbell should be racked above you and an accessible height directly above your head. If you don't have access to a rack, have your spotter give you a lift off. Grabbing the bar, palms up, press it up to release it, and lock your arms directly above your chest. This is your starting position. Inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you lower the bar to your chest. As you come close to touching your pecs, reverse direction decisively and press the bar back up. Do not stop or pause in the bottom position because that will bring in your pecs more than you want, but that doesn't mean you bounce off your chest either. Push steadily upward and as you reach the top, exhale and lock your elbows. Pause a moment at the extended position before beginning your next rep. Continue at a moderate rate of speed, remembering not to arch your back with each lift. If you find yourself arching, lighten up on your weights. With strict form, keeping your elbows close to your sides during both ascent and descent, this will be a great mass builder for you. So watch the elbows, the back, and the width of your grip, and you'll be on your way. 
The bench dip is one of the few compound exercises that's known for its pump as much as its growth stimulation. Your pecs and anterior deltoids will contract strongly at the beginning of the up phase. But if you keep your elbows pointed back and close to your body, your triceps will be doing the majority of the work. Start by placing two benches parallel to each other about two and a half or three feet apart. Sit like this on the middle of one bench, placing your hands by your hips, fingers cupping the edge of the bench, and your elbows pointing directly rearward. Now support your body on straight arms and place your feet onto the other bench. Inhale as you bend your elbows to slowly lower your upper body between the benches until you feel a stretch in your triceps and shoulder joints. After you reach the bottom position, hold your breath and push yourself upward until your arms are fully extended. You can lock your elbows if you want here as long as you don't overextend. Exhale at this position. When you get to the top, pause for a second, then slowly lower yourself and work methodically through your reps. You want to keep your eyes and focus directly forward throughout this exercise. Some performance tips on this. If you're a beginner or if you've never done this exercise before, keep your range of motion short before gradually increasing the depth of your dip. Work into it. For those who want extra resistance as their practice develops, have a partner place a weight plate on your thighs. But if you're going to double or triple up on plates, make sure that your partner hangs on to them to prevent them from slipping and helps take them off at the end of each set. Here we've got another excellent triceps movement, and I'm going to give you a rule to emblazon into your mind throughout this exercise. Keep your elbows stationary and pointed toward the ceiling at all times. Straddle your exercise bench with your feet flat on the floor. Grasping your barbell, keep your torso erect and your eyes looking directly forward. Bend your elbows and raise your arms overhead, allowing your forearm and the bar to hang down behind your head so your elbows point where? Were you listening? That's right, directly upward toward the ceiling. Now, inhale slightly more than usual, hold that breath during the up phase, and keeping your upper arms stationary, press the bar upward until your arms are fully extended. Your little fingers should point forward, ensuring that you are using a neutral grip. Remember not to round your back or lean forward, which decreases the impact of the exercise, as well as it puts excessive stress on your vertebra and shoulder joints. When you hit the peak point in the movement, lock your arms for an even stronger contraction of the triceps. Though always be careful not to overextend your joints. And, have I mentioned this? Keep your elbows pointed toward the ceiling the whole time. Now let's head back to the gym and see how the rope press down is done. With the rope press down, you can really pack on the mass if you isolate your triceps with immaculate form. Stand in front of a high cable pulley and grasp the rope attachment with a neutral or palms in grip. Your feet should be parallel, or if you want, one foot can be slightly in front of the other. Lean forward from the waist to more than about 10 to 15 degrees and position your elbows slightly in front of your body with your hands at approximately shoulder height. Take note, the slight forward position of your elbows is key to this exercise. Keeping your elbows at your sides and your upper arms and torso motionless, inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you push down with your hands. If you want to get a little extra contraction out of your triceps, twist your palms fully downward as you execute the press down. You'll feel the difference especially as you pass the 90 degree position. Push those palms down, pulling the ropes apart slightly as you reach the bottom. Straighten your arms fully, then exhale as you return to the initial position under control where your forearms are just past parallel to the floor. Keep a firm grip through the movement so that your hands and forearms remain in a straight line at all times. To pull maximum efficiency here, Remember to maintain a motionless torso and motionless upper arm position at all times during the execution, both on the push down and the ascent back up. With these next three exercises, we focus on defining your triceps rather than adding mass. We'll begin with the lying French press, where we'll pyramid up the weight during each of four sets, 12 reps twice, then 10, then 8 reps. 
Next, we'll go through the dumbbell kickback. Two sets of 15 with the same weight both times. Then we'll round out the program with two sets of the reverse grip press down with moderately heavy weight. Again, as this is the finisher exercise, take this one to high rep failure. The French press is sometimes called the lying triceps extension and sometimes the nose busters. But you won't break anything if you follow strict form and use a spider. This exercise is probably one of the best ways to create mass building contractions of the hard to develop long head of the triceps running right here. To begin, lie face up on a flat bench with your feet squarely on the floor, not up on the bench. Grasp an easy bar or barbell with the palms up, shoulder width grip. Fully extend your arms upward above your chest, then move them to about a 45 degree angle toward your head. This starting position stretches your triceps. You should feel this tension throughout the entire exercise. If you don't, that means you're moving your elbows around. So stay aware of the constant tension in order to monitor your form. Now inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath. Keeping your upper arms in place, lower the weight until you reach a 90 degree angle in your elbows. Perfect. Now raise the weight under control, extending your forearms and squeezing hard at the top. Quickly exhale, then inhale again and go into your reps. A couple of tips. Use a weight that's light enough for you to maintain proper arm position. This is especially important at the end of the movement where you want to fully extend your arms to maximally shorten and tense all heads of the tricep, especially the long head. Also, we suggest you have a spotter for safety. Like every exercise we are giving you in this series, form, Focus and full motion. Make every millimeter of every movement count. When you watch a segment included on each of these programs on the 27 Weeder Principles, you'll see just how important it is to vary your workouts to attack your muscles from different angles with a variety of different approaches. The dumbbell kickback is a way to do just that and work your triceps from a different angle to stimulate new growth. As always, to get maximum effectiveness, you're gonna to have to give maximum attention to strict form. That means avoiding the temptation to let momentum take over. Okay, let's begin. Place your inside hand on your exercise bench to support your upper body. Your arm should be straight and directly below your shoulder. Bring your inside leg forward and move your outside leg back so you can bend over from your hips and bring your torso into a horizontal position. Grasp a dumbbell in your outside hand using a neutral grip with your thumb side of your hand forward. Keep your upper arm parallel with your body or slightly above. Bend your elbow so your forearm is vertical. Inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath to stabilize your torso as you now straighten your elbow while keeping your upper arm in place. In the top position, your extended arm should be in line with your torso or slightly above. Exhale here as you reach the top of the lift. Hold this peak contraction for a moment, then slowly return to the start position under complete control without swinging the dumbbell. That goes for the up motion as well. Be sure you avoid any swinging movement as you transition from the down motion. That's the basic movement, but be careful. There are lots of ways to diminish the effectiveness of the kickback exercise. As I said, don't let momentum take over. Don't swing the weights. Also, you need to keep your torso stabilized and in a horizontal position. If you let your body angle up with your shoulders higher than your hips, you'll end up using momentum to raise the weights whether you like it or not. Another thing, since a kickback involves all three heads of the triceps, you've got to achieve the full range of motion the exercise offers. That means don't overdo the weight. Make sure you fully extend your elbow and raise your arm slightly above the level of your back. Don't twist on the lift. Use only your arm, not your shoulder, to raise the dumbbell. Now let's head over to the gym one last time for triceps and see exactly how the reverse grip press down is done. This press down exercise is a great finisher for the triceps workout. 
like any isolation exercise, you want to keep in mind some of the general rules we've talked about. Keeping your torso stable, no swaying, no arching, no bending. You want all your movement coming from the flexion and extension of your elbow. Nowhere else. Start by standing sideways in front of a cable machine so that your working arm lines up with the upper pulley cable. Position the leg farthest from the pulley, slightly in front of the other. If you're working the right arm, your left foot should be slightly out in front of your right foot. Grasp the cable handle with a palms up grip. Your starting position is complete when you pin your elbow firmly at your side and keep your upper arm in line with the side of your body. Now inhale and hold your breath as you pull down, squeezing your triceps to pull the handle down. Keep that working elbow pinned there at the side of your body, right in there nice and tight. Don't let it move. Push down until your arm is completely extended and hold the contraction for one to two seconds. Exhale, under control, lower the weight now until you return to the starting position, which should be with your forearm only slightly above parallel to the ground. Don't let the handle come up to your chin or anything like that. Complete a set with one arm, then turn around and repeat with the opposite arm. A couple of performance tips. Keep your working hand in line with that forearm through the exercise. The wrist should never flex or extend. Keep your abs tight throughout and allow your spine to maintain its natural curvature. Finally, this exercise puts a bit of pressure on the thumb. If it's uncomfortable, back off on the weight. There are three crucial, non-optional steps you must do to wrap up your workout. Warm down, stretch, and replenish. I don't consider these as part of a post-workout routine because every serious trainer knows that these elements are as essential to your program as any lift, crunch, or pull-down. When you're finished with your workout, move into a five-minute, low-intensity aerobic exercise. Hit your bike, the treadmill, or whatever suits you best, but keep your heart rate under 100 beats per minute. This allows your metabolism to slow gradually and your body to recover in a controlled fashion. The second step of wrapping up your workout is to stretch the muscles you have just worked. For more detail on the importance of stretching, refer to the stretching pod at the end of this program. For now, remember that you should move through stretches with slow, deliberate, controlled movements with no bouncing or jerking. We know that the key to an effective stretching routine to get your body on its way to a healthy recovery is to target the muscles you've been working the hardest. Please review the stretch pod included at the end of this program for more details and benefits on the science of stretching. For now, let's concentrate on the biceps and triceps. For the triceps, we perform the overhead tricep stretch. Raise one arm overhead and rest your biceps against your ear. Bend your elbow so that your hand drops behind your head. With your other hand, grab the elbow of the bent arm, exhale, and slowly pull the elbow with gentle force, no jerking, behind your head. Hold steadily for 20 to 30 seconds. Don't forget, breathing and stretching is just as important as it is with lifting. Inhale deeply, and as you stretch, gently exhale and relax. For your biceps, stand with your back to a long pole or door frame or machine. Lifting one arm to shoulder height, internally rotate the shoulder, grasp the pole or frame, exhale and roll your biceps upwards. Keep your shoulders stable. When you feel the stretch, hold for 20 to 30 seconds. Repeat for both arms at least twice. Replenish your body right after you're finished training. See the nutrition segment of this program for more information. Truly successful resistance training has as much to do with the power of your mind as it does with the size of your biceps. With all the insight and expertise our team has brought to you through this series, I want to make sure that one point is made loud and clear. Concentration means everything. Not just physically concentrating tension in your muscles, but mentally concentrating on technique, preparation, nutrition, and very importantly, on staying motivated. 
What motivates the most successful resistance trainers? You might think it's the kind of arms you see every month in muscle and fitness, or increased athletic skill, or weight loss, or improved metabolic health. Sure, all these things go a long way, but true motivation, the kind of motivation that will stay with you through the hard times when results aren't showing as fast as you'd like, comes from here. Every time you execute a curl or press, you should mentally be tracking every element of the movement. That means you're watching your breathing pattern, your technique, keeping your shoulders and back out of the lift. You're on guard against recruiting extraneous muscles, against throwing your body around to compensate for too much weight on the bar. It means you are concentrating on your arms as you work them. Imagine and visualize they're exploding right through your skin as you fully extend and contract them throughout the full range of motion. Shut out all external influences and master your mental focus.